for Interprose. Our next speaker is going to talk to us about how to get PAID, developing a conversation structure. Director of Training for Williams and Fudge, please join me in welcoming Greg Rafino. Thank you, Harry. It's about time. I've been here all day, just chomping at the bit. Um, it is an absolute honor to be here. Thanks for those who organized it. I saw this event for the first time two years ago, and I said, I got to get here. So thanks for having me. It's been awesome to see um, these industry juggernauts give us excellent information. I picked up a lot of stuff that I think I can even incorporate into what I'm going to try to say. And seeing how everyone's getting a chance to call out John Bedard, I'm going to join in on this. I got a new tagline for the year, John, okay? When the fanny pack is shown, hey man, go get your own, because I know you want one. There you go. They're coming back, we're bringing them back, so get in on the ground level. So, as Harry said, I'm going to throw another acronym at you. We love them, but I'm going to make this super, super simple. I usually discuss this in the course of 45 minutes to an hour, so I think I can handle 15 minutes. Um, I've been in this industry for 10 years. Prior to that, I was in the restaurant management, food and beverage industry, and I know a lot of you in collector land came from that industry. We love to hire you guys, by the way. You're excellent workers. But if you know what that industry is about, that for me as a manager was six days a week, 60 hours, plus, 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 with a very, very modest salary that when you break it down hourly, I might as well have been washing dishes, okay? So doing that for many years gets really old and really not making a whole lot of money. So our first speaker today, he, he comes out and starts talking about the why. So for a while, I'm trying to get out of the restaurant industry. And all it took was one friend who said, hey, this is what I do for a living. I work 40 hours a week, five days a week. I won't disclose what he said he made, but it blew my mind. And I said, what is your day-to-day -day like? I need to get in on that. So when I talk about my why, why am I in this industry? Why do I do what you do every day, show up for work, put the best face on? I wish I could tell you it was something about world peace or feeding the babies. In all honesty, I don't care about that. It's very selfish. So we have, I'm assuming, frontline collectors in here, right? Obviously ones uh, at home streaming. I came in this industry for one selfish reason only. To get paid. I wanted to get paid. I was tired of waiting on that annual 2.1% salary increase that might not even come. I said, I need to be a part of an industry where I can literally show up every day, be my best self, and understand that I can drastically change and affect what my take-home pay is. For all of you who just got your W-2s, you frontline collectors, if you haven't got it, uh, your company has until the 31st, by the way, to get it to you. <laughs> Look at that number. And if you were in collections all last year, you say to yourself, cool, I'm going to crush that number in 2020. So in 12 months from now, you have every single ability to drastically impact that number. So... Ten years ago, I get into collections. I'm in front line about three or so years on the phone, two and a half years on the phone. My objective is to get paid. I eventually figure that out. A lot of us struggle those first couple months, but you get over that hump. And you start to figure these things out. So eventually, I started to get paid, and I loved it. And I saw what my friend was talking about. But my ambitions were to get back into management. So that eventually happened. I got back uh, on the administrative side. I was now training and development. So that means I went more into a salary type position. So that now meant my why didn't change. I still want my money. I still want to get paid. But the focus of the why drastically changed because now I care about you, you getting paid. I need you collectors to make more money. I want you to make more money. Do I have your attention? Thank you. The answer in the audience was yes. I need you to make more money. Because at the end of the day, it's all cyclical. My company has a very general core you know, business philosophy. I might hear it get thrown around. Nothing, nothing special, but it really simply goes client, company, collector. You can debate that if you want, but it's basically saying if we make really good business decisions and policies and practices for our client and take great care of them, they will continue to take care of us, which allows us to continue to take care of you, the collector. The revenue generators. None of this exists if you're not getting paid. So I might shake my head and agree with my executives and, and owners and say, yeah, that's great, I, I, I can tow that line all day. But when I'm in private conversation, one-on-one -on -one sessions, small classroom sessions, I say, yo, check it out. It's actually collector company, 
client. I care about you first, because at the end of the day, you're the revenue generator, and when you get paid, guess what? We all get paid. So, with that being said, this is just a conversational structure for success. I heard Roger talk about the eight-step collection call. I was trained on that too. It was very daunting, in addition to all these other acronyms of the laws and policies we have to go by. And the psychological pause, I remember all that fun stuff, but it didn't help me really get the job. So I'm gonna break down what paid means here in a minute, and I hope it's something that you don't even have to remember. It just becomes natural, and it just flows, and it just kind of makes sense. And if you kind of go through that structure, you'll increase the odds of your success. I will not guarantee you anything. Any one of us up here that guarantees you something, notice the legal disclaimers and all that, right? All I care about is moving that needle in the slightest bit to up your statistics or the probability of you getting paid and making more money, okay? So with that being said, maybe this was you in your first couple months on the phone. I'm spinning the slot machine all day long, hoping to get lucky. I want that next person who just picks up and goes, I'm so glad you called today. I'm ready to pay you. And I'd say, cool, I know how to process a payment. No problem. That's no way to go through business, certainly no way to go through life waiting around. Um, I, I fantasize about winning the lottery all the time. I know exactly what I would do with that money, but I never buy a ticket. So I'm either gonna get lucky, right? Or you go and make it happen. So what I'm gonna try to break down is you actually affect the conversation and you're gonna make it happen. Uh, we, we heard from Bob Gibson talking about negotiation. This paid breakdown is essentially one continuous form or style of how to negotiate. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's a very difficult skill to acquire unless you're one of those uh, natural who was born at it. So this is something you practice. And for the frontline collectors in here, I'm hoping you try this tomorrow. First phone call. It's just a structure, right? So if I practice it every day, it's consistent and it's strategic. And I'm just trying to follow a basic path so you can get paid. All right? So I already mentioned, I'm going to make you memorize a four letters, four words. But you should know what most of those mean. I hate those acronyms. I hate FCRA and CFPB and SCRA and FDCPA. I know every single one of them means, but they're all telling me what I can't do, what I shouldn't do, how I'm going to get my company sued, how I'm going to be stressed out on every single call. I want someone that's talking to me about how to get paid, how to make money. Money, 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 money. That's why we wake up. That's why we go to our jobs. So let's break this down as simple as can be. So P says payment in full. Now, I don't know if he's still in here. So I love that attorney panel, but uh, Michael Kluth, Klutho, I think, got Klutho? I really enjoy what he was saying, and it's not to disagree with what he said, but I heard him say something to the effect of, if I had heard a collector ask for payment in full, I, I'd fire him or something like that. And that really perked my ears up, because I'm thinking, if my collectors don't ask for payment in full, I might fire them. So it's a matter of a difference of opinion. At the end of the day, though, what he did say, and I very much agree and gravitate towards, is payment arrangements are fantastic, payment arrangements are great, and I'm happy to take payment arrangements. But we can split hairs on who's right or wrong. All you gotta do is go out and try it. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter as long as you get paid. So negotiation 101 to me says, I will never get what I don't ask for. Think about that. Everything you have in your life, you had to ask, more than likely you had to ask for it or to go out and make it happen. It didn't just get lucky and land in your lap. So negotiation 101, it says, it's probably a client expectation. It's probably a company expectation. It will immediately make my paycheck bigger this month. I'll take a $100 payment. That's great. But that $100 payment will not put me over a certain threshold this month to get me into another bonus or commission type level. So I also can't talk you from a $50 payment a month up to a $1,000 balance in full. It's a lot easier to set the ceiling with the expectation and then I can work down so nice and easy for you. So we can split hairs between me and the attorney on who's right, but I'm very happy. If I can't get paid in full today, that's fine. I will then let you know immediately using a lot of my vocal intonations that Sylvia just talked about that we are here to help you and I understand your situation. So let's break down some of these options I have for you. So very first thing you can memorize is payment in full or, or paid. If that ends up being a payment arrangement, I don't care. So in this conversation, I'll ask for money at the front end. Eventually, I'll show you at the end where we ask for it again. And what we do in the middle is the next couple slides. Ask for something and you might get it. Now, when that person says, I can't pay it in full, I don't want to pay it in full, I'm unable to pay it full, and all the reasons they're going to give us, the worst thing in the world, or maybe they even say, hey, I can give you like 25 bucks a month. 
And that's nowhere near a reasonable for the amount that I'm looking at. The last thing in the world I would ever want to say to that person is no, or that's not good enough, or that's not enough, or anything negative. I'm out of work, I'm underemployed. I say, I understand. I get it. It's not a problem. I'm here to work with you. We have lots of options. I was just inquiring if that was a possibility so we can get this off your plate sooner. If not, let me verify a few things, ask you a couple questions, and I'll give you some great options that we can discuss at the end. I'm only going to need a few minutes of your time. So that's another tidbit I like to use as well. When I'm driving through a dark tunnel, I like to see the light at the end of it. Otherwise, it gets kind of scary. I tell my consumers all the time, thank you for your time today. I'll only need a few minutes. So right away, I'm hoping to lower your stress just a little bit. Now, if I ask you for payment in full, and you say, sure, no problem, do you take Visa? Cool, I can turn this presentation off, and we all walk on to the next conversation, okay? But if I don't get paid with money today, what is something I can get paid in? What is like a, a new industry out there that's worth billions and billions of dollars that are stealing it from you right under your nose on your phone, your data, information? If I can't get paid with money today, particularly on the first time I talk to you, this is really ideal for a first conversation, I'm going to make sure I get paid in information so I can easily uh, have an easier time collecting from you in the future. Okay, so ask, ask for payment in full. Then I'm going to move on to the A, which is, okay, I understand your situation. Let me just verify a few things and ask you a couple of questions so I can better understand your situation. I'm going to acquire information from you. A, acquire information. This is where I'm verifying. This is the address. This is your email. Do I have permission for email? This is your phone number. Do I have permission for voicemail? What's another alternative number? Is there anyone else I can talk to about this account? Is mom and dad involved? Something of that nature. Is your spouse involved? All of those things. I might ask you a couple basic financial profile questions. I'm not here to do a tax audit on you. I might say, hey, what are your top three expenses? And a lot of people are going to say, my house, mortgage or rent, uh, potentially childcare, uh, potentially student loans, car payments, things like that, right? I think we could all answer those things. I'm going to use that information to bring that to my next point is to now interact with the consumer. Or as Roger was talking about earlier, building that rapport is so critical. Now, acquiring information, the A, and the interact with the consumer, the I, those can kind of intermingle together. It's not a strict, rigid path. I have to do one and the next. No, I can ask you questions and interact at the same time. So if you tell me, man, I, I pay $1,100 a month in child care. Okay, that's a huge amount of money. I had two kids. I put two kids through childcare. I know exactly how much that cost. It was a beautiful day when they graduated uh, their, their daycare. It was literally like getting a mortgage back. So if I hear my consumers say that, I need to play off of that. Oh, well, that's, I know, man, I used, I used to have the same payment. What a pain in the butt. How old are your kids? Oh, okay, they're four and five. Maybe one more year and that payment will be gone. But I'm interacting with them. Maybe your consumer has got 10 dogs and they spend half their paycheck feeding those dogs. Hey, what kind of dog you got? I love dogs. Or I have this huge student loan bill and I went to X school and I'm gonna say, oh, what'd you, what'd you study? The point being is I'm going to interact with them. I'm gonna show them I'm a human being. I'm not a robot. I have empathy to their unemployed or their difficult life situation. So they know I'm not a bad guy. I'm here to help you. Cool? And then from there, I've set the bar high. I've told you that it's okay that we didn't achieve that bar. I've verified all my information. I got all my uh, permissions for future communications. I got a little bit of information about you. I drove a little bit of a conversation. And I'm going to say, okay, Mr. Consumer, if you just give me one uh, minute here, maybe 30 seconds, and I'll be right back. Grab a pen and paper. I want you to write this down. I'll be right back with a couple great options I think will work out for you. And then my D is very, very simple. I'm going to deliver those payment options based on how that conversation went. Now, I do also live in the real world, and I know in a perfect world, a lot of these conversations just don't really go as smooth as I kind of made it sound like, right? So if you see the slide, there's a very big distinction between the consumer who is cooperative, who engaged, who talked with you, who answered your questions, and maybe asked a couple questions back, versus the consumer who didn't want to tell you anything. I'm not going to tell you how much I make. I don't want to tell you what my bills are. That's okay. That's fine, that's, that's your right. I'm not gonna press you on that. So if I have a cooperative consumer, I will use specifically the information they gave me to give them a payment arrangement that actually makes sense to them, that they can agree to, that they're gonna be able to make every month and not bounce that check or call me every other month telling me to cancel the payment because it makes sense. At the end of the day, of the day some of that information they gave me 
might have helped me understand that they actually could pay it in full. Maybe they told you they live with mom and dad and they're super close with mom and dad and blah, blah, blah. They were just afraid to ask mom and dad. And maybe at the end of the call, I just said, hey, it sounds like you got a great relationship with your mom and dad. Have you ever even asked them? Maybe they were just too scared. Hey, do you want me to talk to them? I'm not a bad guy. So perhaps I can, one of my options could be a payment in full. But the reality is I'm going to give them payment options. And I heard someone in the negotiations earlier too is you don't give five payment options. You don't do the whole color spectrum, right? I might give two, maximum three. Maybe a down payment's involved. Maybe a settlement's involved. Maybe we can, if $150 uh, on one, t uh, one day a month is not good for you, maybe we can do 75 twice a month, whatever the case is. And then you have your uncooperative consumer, and you're going to say, sir, uh, I do appreciate your time. Based on my client and company expectations, here's what I can offer you. And, and that's the best you can do. So living in the real world, not everyone's going to disclose information that really gives you the insight. But I'll tell them, hey, we're trying to work with you here. I understand that you don't want to answer some of my questions. I totally get it. But based on the information, what I have here in front of me, here's what we can do, do for you. And then you move from there. So just to kind of recap on that, I'm always asking for payment at the front of the call. I'm going to let them know right away that it is okay if they can't achieve what I'm asking for because I'm here to work with you. So let's acquire some information. I'm going to interact with you because I'm not a bad dude. I want you to understand that I'm here to work with you. And then I'm also not here to, to be your therapist and spend an hour on the phone with you. So eventually, I'm going to have to say, hey, let's seal the deal. Here are some of the options I have available for you. If you need a day or two, that's fine, and you go from there. So this is about practicing something consistent that you can remember. I make no promises or guarantees that this is the magic formula. If it was, I'd be writing books and you'd see me all over the place. This is all theoretical, but I hear from my collectors that this is a very simple way to go about every single call. It has purpose and direction. And all I really care about is you helping the consumer because that helps you get paid. And I want you to get paid. So, Harry, yeah. I've done my 15 minutes. Yeah. Can I please get paid? Oh, all right, man. You're so in that. Here you go. Hey, all right. So I just want you to remember, my frontline collectors, we love you. You are the revenue generators. Without you, none of this happens. We want and we need you to understand that you're in an industry that is a great thing to make more money. Nobody wants you to make less money. So remember, when the collector gets paid, we all get paid. Happy days! Whoa! <laughs> See you out there.